In this video, you're gonna see me run one of our sales team meetings for our company live. So for context, we have a sales team that does about $30 million a year cash. I have sales managers in place. I typically don't do the meetings, but today one of them was sick. So I stepped in and delivered a crazy good sales training. So essentially what I did is reviewed one of the calls for the reps and we talked about a variety of different things, presence, listening, how and when to ask the right questions, what question different syntaxes to use, among so, so much more. So everybody said it was tremendously valuable in the meeting. So we're gonna splice over to that meeting now. Hope you guys enjoy. Leave a comment if you think it's valuable, subscribe, all the good stuff. See ya. Now, that's me walk you through like what? Same. Awesome, were you? Yeah, like what Okay, well, do you guys have anything else with like a favorite? I do. I do. As you're looking for this email, I definitely want you to like what mobile details, missions, how to get to the company, the process in a few ways. So, based on that, I was going to get a little bit of context, just a clear picture of like what is exactly that you might want to be able to accomplish, goals, and the mind, like that we can see the it has the capacity to get you there. Cool. Okay. Um, so, you have the context, right? What's the biggest thing about like, those and that I do leverage now? Um, having been a financial advisor for 26 years, um, I was always in, I guess, closing mode, if you will. Um, so, by the way, guys, whenever they're on their phone, and you get near the end of the pitch, always ask them where, where their battery's at on the phone. Because if you're on Zoom and you don't have a nice phone, I mean, if you have anything but the iPhone like 12 or 13, and you're, I know that sounds like, really guys? Like, is it, maybe maybe Daniel, it's maybe, maybe like the Daniel, like the high pressure of this guy or something. But I'm just saying, I watched one the other day where everybody was kind of like, man, we don't know why this person just dropped off at the end. And I really think it was this girl's phone. And then, you know, obviously, once they're off, they got to recharge their phone. It gives them like 10 minutes to sort of think about it. And you, we all know what happens then, right? These are very emotional purchases, right? So I would just, I mean, you see him on his phone. I would just throw that in there near the committing. Oh, by the way, dude, how's your phone back? All right, we're about to get to the best part. So I just want to make sure, like, you know, you don't die on me. You know, they're not going to think anything. They're not going to be like, well, but I would just, I know that's, actually, I know that's that actually happened. Sorry. That's what actually happened. According to him. It, it probably is though. I mean, dude, have you ever had an hour long zoom call off your phone? Yeah. It drains it. It, it drains the shit out. Of it, you know, and they don't know, like, they're not thinking about that. And they're like, Oh, I'm at 10%. Will you plug it in? <laughs> plug it in, you know? I, I know that's so basic, right? But like, I'm telling you, that actually happens a lot. Okay, everybody's like, damn, that's happened to me. Yeah, it, it, dude, I'm telling you, like, I watched Spikes and it was like, he's like, man, I don't know why this person dropped off. I'm like, no, her phone died, for sure. Like, I could tell, I could tell her phone died. And all these people aren't making money, so they probably have like an old phone. Mm -hmm. Like my iPhone 8, which is what I had before in 13, dude, I could not have done it. Our Zoom call, even if I was at 100, it drained at least 80% of my back. So like I know for a fact that if they have anything less than 80, they're going to run out. And it's slightly different capacity. Um, and over those years, I was actually able to bring in a little over 50 million in client assets. Um, and I just got burned out, honestly. Um, Getting the assets, okay. Um, managing, that's fine. But when you add in the element of uncertainty with the stock market and you know 9/11, the economy, this and that, it just it, it, it got to um, more than anything. Okay? And I find I found myself losing desire on a daily basis. So after, like I said, about 26 years, like is that enough? Ooh. So what do you say? What, what's the question you use here? Do you use the script or do you you contextually ask the right question? What was the line in the sand moment that made you? Yeah, who said that? Joseph. Atta boy, dude. Atta boy. Uh, yeah, let's see if you said it. That's basically a quick summary of it. So I'm not you talked to like David um, before this, right? Um, you saw an ad, but I guess obviously, man, what did I treat? Can you use the text, please? Yeah. yeah. So you would jump right into that question rather than stick to the call flow? Yeah, I mean, he just, it's like, dude, if somebody gives you a ball, like if somebody, what's it called in volleyball where they do one of these to set? Yeah, yeah, if somebody just lobs you one, like you spike it, dude. That makes um, sense. Just, you gotta get out of like, you're running this script in your brain. Like most people in their lives are just running scripts. Like you go to the Starbucks person, they're running a script called the Starbucks, you know, 
cashier script. Okay. You go to the car wash, the car wash person's, you know, doing your wash a car script. Right. You guys get on these calls. How many times have you guys done calls? A lot of times. Right. What your brain tries to do is run a script, mm. which is good to an extent because it conserves energy. Right. The human, human body and brain and system is, is really designed to conserve energy so you don't die. Right. Like if, if you study uh, evolutionary psychology. Yeah, like obviously we, we want to optimize ourselves so we reproduce. That's why we create patterns that, you know, fire. Okay. There's like patterns, there's scripts. So you're running a script. Like if, if, for instance, if somebody who says, great, that sounds awesome. Let's begin with the end of mind. Ultimately, what's the goal? That's your, 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 your prioritizing your script in your brain, <laughs> the physical sales script and the script in your brain to conserve energy opposed to presence. Mm. Okay. When you have the presence and the aliveness and like your soul is turned on, then you ask the question, wow, 26 years. Dude, can I, I, I know we just, <laughs> I know we just met like two seconds ago, but can I ask you a personal question? I mean, obviously you were tremendously successful with that. A lot of people would hang their hat on that and retire exactly what you did. But after like 26 years, you know, was there like a certain moment or line in the sand where enough was enough and, and, and you decided to leave like immediately? Like what happened? Right? So you see what, what we're, we're, we're technically, we're not 10 minutes into the call. We're what, two minutes into the call? You see how I, would, I just got everything. Like you had an opportunity to get everything within two minutes and now you're gonna make it way fucking harder on your stuff. Does that make sense? hundred percent. I think yeah. I would have done that. Um, someone told me to stick to call flow, um, but yeah. Whoa, 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 bro, like listen to the person, dude. I think that's what you need to stick to. Yeah, yeah stick to the call flow. But the call flow is like, everything in that call flow needs covered, but sometimes where you cover it can change. But if you're prioritizing the call flow over the human being, are you really selling or are you not? Like, mm. you know what I mean? Good. Right? Uh, but like, again, like, when I say that, let me, let me swing the pendulum back. If he would come on and said a bunch of nonsense, it doesn't mean we should ask questions about the nonsense. Then we need to get back to the call. Does that make sense? If he's like, yeah, I wanted to, I just want to know the price and I want to do that. You don't, you don't start telling him the price. If he starts talking about his dog and he's like, oh, my, my dog said it was a good idea. You know, you don't start asking him like, oh, what's, what's your relationship with your dog? You know, it's like, you'd have to like very clearly know he just volleyed one for you and you need to spike it, not like ignore it because you're trying to make sure when somebody reviews your call, you're following the process. Is this making sense to everybody? Please let me know in the chat. Just pound. Yeah. I feel like I'm on a webinar when I do this, but it's just, we have too many people. So you see how, in typical cool warden fashion, you know, we spend, we spend half, we spend like half, uh, half the call on one minute of the call, but seriously, like how you start the call is how you end the call. Okay. I'd ask this then what? Okay. So he's, he's not, uh, he left his main sales thing. When did he leave? Second thing. Number three, what are you doing for work now? Number four, how is it? How much money are you making compared? So if he's not working, I want to know, okay, great. How much money, or sorry, if he, if he is working, I want to know, okay, are you making what you made when you did the financial advising, making 50 million or whatever it was? Like how much are you making then compared to now? If he's not working, gotcha. How much are you making back then? And okay, and you don't have any income right now. Guess what question I'm going to ask next? The how he's been, dude. That's you were making him 15 grand a month back then. Uh, now position the is only being, bringing you three grand. Uh, can I ask you, does that put you in a tough spot? Does that put you in a tough spot financially? In what way, though? Do you see how it's like I just go like my ability to go to the center of what matters in this call takes three minutes, and my tonality allows me to get to it much quicker. Hmm. See what I mean? This is the level, like, dude, do you like? 
I, I, I feel like I have a general idea of who you are, Daniel. Do you just want to be like, okay? Or do you want to be like the GOAT at, at sales and persuasion and all this stuff? Yeah, the GOAT. I'm telling you how to do it, okay? Like you need to be able to have all like the call flow, the questions, the seven beliefs. Those are like, you kind of got the philosophy. And then now when you're focused and present on the human, you're not thinking about yourself. Your focus is on that person. These things can come through you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Is this making sense to anybody else or am I sounding like Yoda? This is great. Makes sense. Okay. Thanks a lot. So you see the difference? This is how I just get on. I just look people in the eye and it's just different, man. Like it's just, I, I come from this strong philosophy, but I'm not doing a script. But however, after you do a bunch of these, you'll find like, you know, you can, you, they end up kind of going the same way. See what I mean? Like what I just explained to you, I've done before, right? So like there is pattern recognition going on where I'm like, boom, he's in this situation. And then you see how I just teed up question, 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 question. And I know exactly how I'm gonna lead the call. Okay, so again, guys, if this is really confusing to you, like I don't want it to be like, this is something that when, when you know, when we get back into it a little bit next week, uh, we'll, we'll work on you guys to get better at this. So I don't want you guys like, fuck, now I can't do the script, okay? So like at the end of the day, the, pro the call process you feel the most certain with will be the one you do the best with. And that's why I'd rather have you pitch the wrong pitch than the right pitch. Because at, at the end of the day, I care about how you're showing up, right? Your certainty. And, and, and that's what the person's going to mirror and going to feel. Okay? Okay? So again, I don't want this to confuse anybody. This is something, you know, review these. This is stuff like, guys, I don't know what you guys do in the morning. I always worked out before my sales days. This is something where um, essentially, like, listen to these calls we did this week every day in the morning. Because you'll hear my energy, and then you'll start thinking the right way. Your energy will start to show up differently. That's that's so that's why it's so important to listen listen to or read or whatever empowering shit in the day. It primes your mind the right way, even subconsciously. Mm. So, um, basically, getting more so the end result without everything else that I've had to deal with um, leading up to the end result. Um, I don't like you know prospecting or just talking to people is okay with me. Um, but then after years of managing a market, this and that, and other variables that you don't have control over, it just it, it won't be out. So for me, it's still the interaction and talking, which I enjoy. Um, listening and focusing on what they're looking for, uh, that I like still. So um, I recently actually for fun went to um, the Liberal Rainbow dealership, and then they hired me, and so I went for two days of training and decided not to go back. Um, I just couldn't see myself as a car sales. So I started looking and I thought, you know, give this a try. Okay. Oh, yeah. this, this guy should, he, okay, he should for sure buy. Unless he doesn't have money. For sure buy, right? Again, so what didn't you like about your funny, I know, I know you mentioned like managing the money market. So what are you saying is like, you didn't mind the sales aspect of it. What you didn't like was like managing the, the money. And the market. Explain that to me a little bit. Like, what didn't you like specifically and why? Right? Why well, am I going to ask that question? Because then in the pitch, I'm going to say, you know how, er like in the transition where I'm explaining the opportunity, I'm going to say, you know how earlier you told me that you really hated doing the market money managing and all the complexity and dealing with all the volatility and kind of like fulfilling on the client at the same time you're selling the client? One of the things I like the most about what I do is that I don't have to do any of the fulfillment at all. doesn't mean I'm not going to try to set everyone up for success because that's extremely important to my integrity. But at the same time, I'm focused on one thing. And I think that's something you would really like about this. Okay. But like, how do I know how to do that? Am I going to remember? Fuck no. I got to write it down. Very, very key. I write that down. So when then I go to my pitch section, I know to be able to bring that back up. Also, as they're saying stuff, you know when I like, I was like, dude, you need to ask this, 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 this. 
as, as they're saying stuff, I write all the questions down. I want to ask an order. Now, obviously I do it super shorthand. So like tough position would be like TP or like tough, you know, like, cause I'm not gonna have time and I'll circle it. Any questions I want to ask, I write down, I circle notes. I don't circle. And then along the right column, what I would do is I'd write out the pitch. So that's another thing is I used to just write out the pitch for the people as I was on the call. That's how you get 100% buy-in to the certainty that this is the right thing, now is the right time in thesis. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. The line just makes sense for you, but what's the yeah, you're just not, dude. You're, you're, I mean, we know how this is going to go. So, I mean, you're just not, you're, you're running the script. I, 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 think, I feel like I've already covered this, right? You might do fine here. And you you also might go into some, like a lot of this stuff I'm saying and like questions I would ask and I got answers to, you, maybe you do get that stuff later. But the point is, it's easier when you can get it up front. And the, like when you can get right to the goal right in the beginning, the, con the conversation just way different, you know? And then finally, um, a longtime client of mine um, who was strictly in municipal bonds because of um, his profile. You know, there was a period where he then guaranteed municipal bonds dropped in value. And I said to him, I was like, they will do that, but come on, right? Because that is something that you get really good at, the money's going to fall. Um, but I'm obviously from some of those happen just like day to day. Like, I just can do it. So. What was about this is about you, man, right? And sales, interacting people, right? I mean, you don't have to do the call and all that stuff, but what was about before this process? Um, something I wasn't as familiar with, um, but it's not as, if you will, mainstream or things that everyone's aware about. Aware of. Yeah, I don't know. How, you know, a lot of you guys, I don't see you guys take any notes. Maybe I'm wrong, but should I took, you should see my notes, man. They're insane. Yeah. Cole, I told them not to take notes because they were like, we could only see the top of their head throughout the majority of discovery. So that's on me. Well, yeah, I would just fix the top of the head thing. I mean, I'm sure there's a, yeah. I mean, if I took notes, you wouldn't see the top of my head. I don't know. Like I would just like John's camera is going to be fine. Now, like Julie, you, you might have to mess with your camera. Jared, you'd be fine. Daniel, I think you'd be fine. So I don't know. Just, I would just figure it out. Cause I, I, I don't know how, like, like I, I don't even know how you would do the call out notes. To be honest. I don't think I could, I mean, I could maybe do it because I could like kind of remember the, you know, the shit. Like, that'd be even hard for me. Yeah, I, I just had never taken one and I was fine, but that's on me. I should have realized that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, um, and that is what really got me is because um, I enjoy, I, I really like alternative, slightly off, if you will, um, that isn't quite mainstream. I've always kind of been that way. And I, like to try to position myself in areas where they're more at the onset than already caught on. And, you know, having the potential to be a part of that is happening just like day to day. And you've got to make those stuff. Why don't, why don't, why don't you just, you know, like that, like, thought, like, right in mind, why that, um, five figures, a month? Yeah, like, okay, five, 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 five. That's, yeah, I don't know. It's like pretty much we just social media campaigns for like we're saying it's the growing terms. But uh, overnight, like during the pandemic, we lost money because our clients like shut down. It was like a business time. I'm glad I had a relationship. I'm like, you know, it's not. I worked 15 hours a day. I did. Like, lost relationship. Even for that. Um, health was down too. And I was just like, it's time to like really focus on me. Like, what do I actually? And that's where I came across you know, something like this, where it's a little different. I already had sales experience. I'm working in multiple sectors of business, but at the same time, I was like, I knew that if I want to get to where I want to get, like, I just need to do what's like working successfully in the industry. And that's why I came to something similar. And I fast forward and do it for years. It's like I wake up, like money's not like a big financial stable. I don't have to worry about it too. But I really like really enjoy the fact of like having best things say, hey, bro. Or, hey, like, you know, you train yourself, like, that's really something I feel like, you know, just with you and getting into the industry, it's really going to drive you and more rich. And that's what we look for. Right. Um, I'm not really, like, obviously, I'm not sure. Because at the end of the day, I think, um, you know, if you weren't capable of representing some of these clients, the tendency is involved with it, like, that you're coming, it's not We don't look for everybody in particular. Because um, even though, yeah, you're messing to the academy, you're messing to training on stuff, at the end of the day, man, um, we're also looking to not ruin really our reputation. And so if we sign up everybody, it's like, it's not going to make sense. Um, and just like you have the ability to get on these calls, whatever you talk to, you can tell someone, hey, for you, it's not good. I think it's worth taking 100%, man. So I think you some insight of how the industry might work and how many training costs works actually get through. Because within the industry, man, uh, the positions that you're going to shoot for, uh, they're a position where you get to wake up and you're having a down report. You're not prospecting, you're not phone calling. I mean, companies are paying a lot of money for you to have these counterfeit. In return, you have to make sure you report with. It's not, obviously, you're losing a lot of money. So, like, you're working with coaches or consultants or agencies. That's really the three main um, people that you work with. But they're all transformational. I'm nothing physical. So, it could be like, you know, program or something or service and how they use to build this. How can you just make money with my brand? Oh. Okay, yeah. So, I can tell. Are you reading from something? No. Huh. So, 
upwards of 100 grand a service or program, depending on what you might sell or what industry you might want to go into. Right? Um, and so on these calls, then, by are you the sure you're not reading? I have, I have bullet points. I have bullet yeah, points. Yeah, I can tell. Oh. Okay. Well, that can be good and bad. Um, so another part about running a script is like it, it limits your range of expression and your cadence. So you, you, you can tell like your, your, your range of expression is down, right? So ideally what you want to do is you want to get these things down so pat, like you do kind of, cause you're end up saying the same shit a lot of the times, you know, you tailor it to the person, but you end up saying the same shit a lot of the times. So you really need to like, I mean, shit, you do say this so many times. I mean, you should just be able to like riff it off the cuff. Uh, having a few bullets, is that the end of the world? No. But um, I, I think your tonality here is sounding a little robotic. Okay. Um, I also am a little confused on like what you're even talking about. Sometimes I'm talking to you, but just like the process that we teach and the process that we're on your head, it's the same process we do on scales. Watch about the videos, someone ever can get to know the process. I talk to someone else, I'm something to get further. Like the job is not to convince them, but it's what's really like second. This is something that's actually helping solve their problem or challenge with it and solve that. So that's why going out and call sales. We call leadership based on both. Because if you want to be one coach, you want to mentor, to like make sure that like you're talking about that. Hey, you're like you're you're kind of you're you're dropping it on them, dude, opposed to having a conversation. Okay. So it should be like in the transition, it should be like, all right, so. I know, I know, I know you've done a lot of sales before. How much do you know about remote closing specifically? Right. They say whatever they say. Maybe you said that. Right. Then you say, okay, great. Here's how it works. Okay. And then you kind of explain it and you need to like slow down a little bit and also be like, does that make sense? So do you see and like, you know, more, a little bit more dialogue, right? So do you see how, when you step in and take these calls off the business owner's plate, they're happy to pay you 10% commission. Does that make sense? Right? Okay, great. Do you, you know, I, I even be saying, do you see how based on this, like you're not gonna have to do any of the fulfillment and you can just focus on one thing and opposed to something like cars, it's something that you can actually be passionate about and really get behind something. So it's like, you, you wanna break it up. A good rule of thumb is like every 45 seconds, at least does that make sense needs to happen um i don't want to say every 45 seconds you gotta ask like what are your thoughts on that or do you see because you know then your your calls are gonna go fucking crazy but you do want to incorporate a lot more of those into a dialogue so it's more digestible because when you limit your range of expression and you anvil drop and you give them a lot of information it's like it's like looking at a powerpoint and there's like too much text on the powerpoint does it make sense it's the same feeling you're like oh like it's like you're like i am just like checked out like you've all yeah. been on a call and you're like man i'm like checked out of this shit. like i'm just ready to get off this thing okay i'm not saying that's like happening that bad to you guys but there is a degree of that to where they're like yeah, i'm not like totally getting it it's like, it's engaging too much of the prefrontal cortex that fatigue so again it's like we need to keep a simple dialogue digestible a lot of tie downs it's like we're, we're building a cat like we're building blocks we're building like a lego castle it's like block 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 right the, the glue of the blocks is the tie downs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I can give you the platform based on like, what they're looking for, based on your knowledge, based on the training, whatever you're selling, and a cash out. So that's like a whole problem. Now, on the two positions in space, there's a point of setters. So they give us some context, point of setters. They pretty much turn out the calling, they're not resting on the camera. Companies are going to walk in, up, come in, they're writing them out to make sure that uh, they're passing those qualified people. Just making sure that these people can actually get help. On the low end, and they make four to six grand on a high intent flow, depending on the struggle. Yeah, you're just totally like. That's going to have the conversation to remote. You see what I mean, dude? Like, we're looking at balls, which I'm not. Hey, I got a question on that, actually, Cole. Do you see. Do you see us maybe not explaining setters and closers to somebody as an expectations issue? Yeah, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even worry about it. Okay. Because I don't ever. I would say, well, I mean, dude, you could say they're setters and closers. And then I would just say a lot of time, like, uh, the income potential, but generally closers make more than setters, but depending on the company, the income potential, uh, sometimes setters can make more than closers. You know, a, a, you know, a setters of one company can make more than closers of a different company, which is true. So I would just say something along those lines. Okay. Right. Or, or, or dude, you, dude, for some of these people, you probably don't have to mention. Yeah, I haven't been. I usually just pitch it as like the comp structure for a closer. And I don't really even say the difference between the two. I think it's fine. 
Number one, and I'm just going to background just for some um, sure. device can stick to server or straight to server because you still have to use the same cost of just to make sure that, you know, hey, I want to tie down and be really helpful person. But at the same time, like, now you have more control of action on the people, of action your calendar, of action your step. Um, the way it works with the closer is you have a calendar, you set your own hours, and if I'm yeah, dude, I don't know how he's even taking any of this in. That's probably why maybe he hung up on you. It seems like you're still talking. Yeah, that's that's the that's the the dirt base when you're like <laughs> when you're like, oh, it's too much information. Uh, make your calls. You gotta sometimes talk. You gotta go in. Maybe you're you're still talking, dude. Holy shit. Um, I'll one cost of this. So yeah, pitch is long. Essentially, um, we're promising, but can't replace anyone who's offering you. So that's where training comes in. Walk your through that. What's up? Yeah, and then your eyes are your eyes keep going over here. Like they know, dude. If I know, they know. Right? You're talking to them. This is a recording. Okay. So like, again, it's like, I mean, do I need to like harp on this or can you see the issue? dude? hundred percent. I can see the issue. Yeah. You just, I call that the anvil drop, right? I teach about this in the program, you know, anvil drop bad dialogue. Good. Right. And it's a balance, right? Because at the end of the day, you do end up saying the same shit a million times, but like, it, like saying the same thing a bunch of times, and then also being present and totally engaged and uh, with the person and being authentic and having that wide range of expression, those things are not mutually exclusive. If they were, you would never watch a movie because all the actors would sound really bad. Right? Like you can be scripted, you know, this is what, you know, Belfort says, right? But you could be scripted and sound extremely like you're not scripted. Right? That's the whole point of a fucking actor, right? But like, and the nice thing is like, you guys should know through doing this so many times that like, you, you should know what you wanna say and you can create a dialogue with it and it can be real flexible and you can incorporate it in and kind of like tailor it for this person one way, tailor it for another person another way. Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah, I think I've been too uh, structured. I'm gonna go more. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, you should, I mean, shit, I mean, you say that every day, like you should kind of know those things, right? Like we might change that a little bit, but for now it's like, you can at least have a little bit more cadence and tonality and like engagement back and forth because the engagement and the tie downs make it more digestible, you know, because it slows it down. Does that make sense? When you anvil drop it and you give them everything all at once, that's why when people like teach that sales training, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to explain a bunch of stuff to you. Wait for your questions till the end. I'm like, okay, this person doesn't know what they're talking about. Because it's like the person is just going to get anvil dropped, and then it's like they're just like, oh, like, uh, it's just too much, you know. And then it, it confused buyers uh, don't buy. All right, guys. Good luck on your calls today, and I'll see you tomorrow.